Welcome back to another Tech Deck Prepare video. In today's edition, we'll be working on this very special case. This is an iPhone 12 Pro Max with many issues. First, as you may see, it has a back crack, so very susceptible to get water inside. Second issue, the camera does not work properly. On top of that, there is a lens that has been exposed. So the client reaffirmed us that the problem was not the lens itself, but the camera itself, because when he goes here, check this out. So it does make this sound right here. So when you see this, obviously this is the first time you want to look to a faulty camera. However, you see the camera is working. So you want to check each lenses. This one works. Oh, there it is. So I don't know if you guys can see. There you go. Actually, it was the 2.5. So when you click on the 2.5, the rotation stops means that's the faulty camera. However, the camera system on the iPhone 12 Pro Max is one single piece. So we're going to need to replace the camera. Also make sure to put a new lens to cover the camera. But the trickiest part is that when you get those type of issues and the customer does not want to fix the auto screen, how do we go about this? Stay tuned for the rest of the video and we'll show you. Okay, so lastly, meanwhile, the glue is curing and you have the clamps on. You want to strategically place the clamps in order for you to change the camera. You want to leave the camera at the very last because this one is already broken, so you don't want to risk your replacement camera. And by the way, guys, if you're looking for any parts, rear cam, front cam, charging port battery, LCD premium uh, or uh, the OLED one, we do sell them at techday.com, along with the services such as advanced data recovery service and mail-in repair. So should you be interested, all the links are below in the description. Thank you for supporting the business. So for this, uh, it's pretty straightforward. <coughs> Remove the tri-wing screw holding the bracket for the rear camera. So two advantage that you're getting through leaving the clamps on while you're doing repairs in a strategic order is that you're saving a huge amount of time and you can uh, compete with other like competitive technician in a way that you can deliver better results uh, in less time. So this is like the key factor most uh, clients look for a business when they walk into your shop or whatever type of business you have. They want to see, because it's a niche market, there is so many competition, there is so many shop. How can you like uh, declassify yourself from all the other shop? What is like your signature? What can you provide for the customer that will make him think and use your service? So that's the key you want to think when it comes to like a uh, phone repair, like in this type of scenario, because this one is not really something to be considered a beginner. This is more like the advanced repair, so like time efficiency, how to operate with the repair without causing no issues because this type of repair, a tiny crack, tiny debris, a miscalculation, and just like this, the whole repair is gone. You start panicking, you want to do everything all over again and before it comes the customer as you more pressure. And here at TechDep, we're very serious about time. So whenever we promise something to the customer, it has to be done no matter what unless it's for like a diagnostic where we cannot promise the moon but we could promise like a certain type of real reality and expectation so we would never like try to sway the customer in a way that he would feel oh like this guy for sure they're gonna push a button and fix it no that is not the goal it's we do not want to try to look how many problems the thing has is how many ways can we fix it so once it's connected, boom, keep in mind, battery has to stay disconnected. So, okay, naturally now we want to make sure it sits. I'm going to put back the metal bracket, like a tiny hinge right here. You want to make sure it goes a little bit under. There this one has to go under. So that's how you know, like you have the right spot. Uh, this is very useful. It's called ESD stand uh, phone support, ESD start for electrostatic discharge so it's just to make sure like while you're operating on the device you're not gonna short quit any uh, little components from the motherboard such as capacitor transistor those are very easy to short like with the slight metal connection it's conduit uh, could like lead 
to like <clears throat> parts of the board being shorted out. So you want to be careful when it comes to this. Although like this type of issues arise more from like the last generation of iPhones, such as the 7, 7 Plus. You, I don't know if you guys remember back in the old day, uh, there was this thing called iPhone backlight. <laughs> that was like very popular, which means like whenever you try to change just the screen, if you accidentally touch because the connector were like very exposed to transistor apple fixed it by then but like before it was not really uh, optimized so technicians would accidentally while trying to just disconnect the the screen barely touch one tiny portion of like next to the connector and boom they see a black screen they say like what did i do how could i have broken it and just later after that you have to go through the schematic and you realize well the backlight ic chip which is not present in this phone because it's all a display but back in the old days they used the chip to regulate the lighting of the lcd so like there was kind of like a button inside the phone that controls the screen so it was a little bit backwards but it's just the concept and yeah, it's always good to be like, you know, better safe than sorry. That's the term. All right, so once this is connected, we're just gonna start by removing the clamps. All right, now we're gonna reconnect the screen. And the customer didn't wanna like, fix his screen so that's why we accepted it because all the other shop couldn't uh, they felt like the front screen would be too much worth of a risk and actually it was the total price that we gave him was actually just the price of the cost of the screen itself just to give you guys an idea of the original i won't say more okay so you want to reconnect the front proximity sensor and the lcd digitizer before you do so <clears throat> leave the battery disconnected good habit to like start from the top make sure that the little hinge right here is going under okay now you want to reconnect the battery so luckily for this customer even though the back cracked he was lucky that no debris punctured the battery otherwise it would inflate and cause another issue for the screen all right so once it's done i'm gonna carefully reposition the screen because this is cracked so you want to be careful okay all right nice going down exactly the way he brought it tiny poke gentle i'm gonna push the power button in the meantime let's put the power so meanwhile, it's booting on. You can put the panel up screws. Okay. Nice. Give it a second. Nice. So screen works exactly the same way the customer brought it to us with no lines. And make sure you guys can see it's perfect. All right, so we can see 2.5 works perfectly. No more black spots. Focus on the 2.5. There's a lot of lights here, but at least there's no black spots. So that's what we want to make sure. And the 0.5 works perfectly. Okay, and without further ado, Thank you guys so much for sticking back for the video. Please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And with the help of the community, we'll always make sure we bring excellent content for you guys. Thank you guys for supporting business. Again, if you saw any parts or tools you need in this video, check out the links below or click in the link below for mailing repairs or data recovery service. Until next time, guys, thank you very much.